Hi, I'm Tim Robel, and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today, I'm here to talk to you about my KTM 890 Rally, and I just installed the Rottweiler intake. So this is not going to be a how to install this. Um, Chris has done a great job with uh, directions. The directions have a QR code. There's a video on the Rottweiler Performance uh, YouTube, and... Um, it's pretty straightforward. It took me about an hour. I referred back to the video a couple times just to make sure I wasn't uh, screwing anything up and it went together super nice. Now this is the matte finish, finished one and I did opt to uh, get an extra filter that came pre-oiled and I just noticed that there's a uh, R on it. That's kind of cool. Um, for how this is packaged and delivered, it came in this uh, cool little backpack that can be uh, reused. Um, I've been using Chris's products for probably, I'm going to say eight years, ten years maybe. Um, when I did my uh, 950 Super Enduro um, from a Supermoto, I went ahead and uh, went with his air intake. And um, he had the Factory Pro Jet Kit. Um, one of the things that you get from Rottweiler Performance is um, he's got a full website full of really cool items. And um, I'm so thankful uh, to have somebody like this that's in the industry making great parts for our motorcycles. Um, when I was on a forum, oh, it was probably about a month, month and a half ago, and there's a lot of guys... Um, I won't say a lot of guys. There was a couple guys that were commenting how they uh, they hated Rottweiler performance, and I just couldn't I couldn't grasp like their customer service is great. Every time you call, they have the right answer. Or if they don't have an answer, which I've never run into, um, they'll get you the answer. Um, you know, he's doing dyno work. Um, this intake, if you look at the professional quality, uh, the carbon on this is so so sexy, so nice, very well laid out very well thought out fit finish everything is just legit on this i'm super thrilled that someone's making pop products like this for our bike now if this is the first time to um my channel um i ask you please like and subscribe i got more updates coming on especially this 950 but i you know i got the full factory Chiron build over here i got the electric motion trials bike I got the 450 I use for Enduro Cross and Extreme Enduro. And then under the cover there is a 1290 that's got all of uh, Chris's stuff on it. I'm not paid. I didn't get any of this stuff free. I paid 100% um, retail. I ordered it over the phone. It shows up. Um, super happy with his products. Now, a lot of you have been asking. Um, you know that I cut three inches off of this... Uh, expansion or not expansion chamber but muffler or, or silencer as you want to call it um so people were like start it up let's hear it my last video was in the wind so i didn't really kind of get to do that so this one is kind of a new uh video with the uh the intake on it but bike starts up just fine uh, i've already had it running so i got heat in the motor but we'll let some oil get circulating but, um, you know, we're in a closed space. We've got the, uh, the patio. I'm inside a garage. Uh, 
once again, if we don't support people like this in the industry, then the industry falls off and we don't get uh, cool parts. Um, that's one of the coolest parts I've put on this bike so far. Um, also put it in this uh, trans saver, which keeps you from bending this transfer fork and shifting forks inside. So if you push down too hard, um, it bypasses. So it saves that uh, that shaft right there from getting um, bent or screwed up if you accidentally hit it down. Um, what's some of the other things? I put this, um, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a review uh, video. I put this uh, chain guard on uh, for like a case saver and help uh, extract mud and everything out of that area. AXP skid plate. Um, I ordered some pegs uh, to try out. Now I got the rally pegs on here. These are like $200 pegs that came stock on this bike. Um, but I really, I don't like them. So uh, I'm gonna try something else out. Usually I do fast ways. Um, maybe I'm gonna pay the price for it, I don't know. But these are like 60 bucks off of eBay. So I thought I would check those out and see if I actually even like them um, and how they work and um, we'll go from there. Um, I have ordered the Rebel X Tower. It's on back order to, I think, around February. Um, I did have some questions. People asked me what these uh, handguards were, and these are the highway dirt bikes. And they have a mirror integrated into them that are super cool. They come out, flip out. They work really uh, well. You can actually see out of them. For the size they are, they work super well. Then when you go off-road, they just tuck down and nest in that little hole there. And uh, usually I don't even push them in that far. Usually it's like where that one's at is kind of where it stays. Um, I have my quad lock on here. Um, this comes with the highway dirt bikes um, uh, bar ends. They utilize the big bolts, so you have to tap the inside of your uh, in your bars. If you remember years ago, if anyone's been watching my channel for a while, I came up with something called the bar button. And I don't even know if I have any left, but it was the same theory. I took the Circa Pro bins. And basically you tap the bar and then this bar button screws in and then the, the uh, pro bin goes into that because of that little cleat inside. Um, what happens when you crash doing an extreme enduro or a, a high speed get off is that cleat either snaps or the bolts uh, like a grade five maybe. Um, it breaks off and so now you got this handguard flopping around that you got to figure out what you're going to do. And usually for me it ended up in uh, the bush and I would come get it back later. Um, it always happens at the worst inopportune time. Um, I did try, and I think the last time I had this set up, um, this is Alt Riders um, two position um, brake pedal. So it allows you for the taller one is for a standing, and then the lower one would be for street. Problem with this thing is, as I stand probably 90% of the time, this really needs to be a full nother uh, width wider. So um, that may be one of my first machine parts that I make for these bikes is do a maybe a double wide make that about an inch or maybe even an inch and a quarter wide and then just enough to get your toe on it because when you're sitting down you actually have more control just to to, to slide your, your toe over but standing up trying to find that and missing it sometimes um that sucked um let's see i got no uh, i did the uh the decat on it so she's running uh, a lot cooler um these tires and wheels are coming off. We'll make our way over here to uh, the new setup. So I had a new set of wheels. I ordered these off of uh, Rottweiler Performance's uh, website. And um, they're a uh, 215 rear. And I forgot what the front is, but these are A60s. And I set this up because I run the tubeless system and I really like the tubeless system. So I got a tractionator going on the back and that'll have a tubeless kit in it. And then um, I have another uh, setup for the 21 right here. And I'm gonna run the Golden, which is also a DOT tire. Um, you, oh, both of these tires, I'll only get probably somewhere between 350 and 500 miles out of them. Uh, usually on a back tire on a V-twin that I go ride off-road, I use the rear end to steer the bike. Foot pegs and, uh, and throttle steers this motorcycle. So um, I, I'm not expecting to get, uh, those tires are $100 a piece and uh, 
I'm not expecting to get a whole lot of uh, use out of them. Um, happy with the skid plate. Uh, I have a whole 30 miles on this motorcycle. I've taken it out three times, just kind of breaking it in, getting the feel for it. Uh, the last trip was going to be about a 90 mile loop and that brake pedal was just had me so screwed up. So I've raised my brake pedal. Um, this is the factory one they give you. I flipped it to the higher position. It's uh, reversible so you can flip it up or down. Um, it's not as high as I would like it, but it's as high as I can go without uh, taking that bolt out or machining the bolt. Got no problem doing that. I'll probably end up doing that in the future, but I think I am going to make a machined part. Um, another thing that I did with these wheels is, um, with the single sided brake kit that, uh, once again, got off the of Rottweiler performance, um, it uh, comes, I got the, uh, the Brembo kit. So it comes with the, uh, the caliper, uh, the centered pads. Um, I think it came with the rotor. I don't remember if I ordered that or not. I ordered two of these rotors for um, for this bike because I was going to put the, uh, the Galfers on. I really like the Galfer rotors. Um, so those are going to go on my 1290 Super Adventure, which I use for um, kind of a commuting bike uh, back out to my dad's. It's got cruise control on it. It goes down the highway really nice. Um, so I just went ahead and kept the, the duels, and this came with a single, and I got the uh, Galfer for the rear. So um, these wheels are going on. I am going to, and I don't know if this is a G13 classified little uh, trick or not, but I am going to take the rear traction control or ABS sensor off the back here, and I'm going to relocate that to the front wheel. So it's always reading uh, the exact same. So I won't have traction control or ABS, which I prefer. Uh, no kidding, man. I went out and I got the stuff turned off on the bike, but I uh, went to go into my first corner and just do like I normally do, re riding a trail I'm very familiar with. And I usually rear drift it, one almost full lock, and then come back the other way almost full lock. Um, I think I had traction control on or had it partially off or something, but I wasn't doing what I was going to do. And um, between that and the brake lever, um, I almost went off the uh, the side of the cliff. And I said, man, I got to get rid of all this crap and get back to a dirt bike just uh, so my mind's right on this. I don't mind having um, all of that stuff on my 1290 because I don't use it the same way. I'm not riding it like that. That bike's used for um, like bike packing, uh, going out on adventures, uh, back road adventures, um, camping off the bike, going going run into the store. Um, that's what that bike's for. This bike is really just a training tool, and um, I tried to put the best parts that I could find on it that make the most sense and make it easy to work on. Um, speaking of that, uh, power cell performance. Sells this cool little uh, deal that it takes this. I think this is an IMS cap. Looks like an IMS cap to me, but um, it's just a slick little design. Turns it into a dirt bike. You don't have to have the key. It, lose, it lost probably a half a pound of weight off of the... Uh, well, I just threw that away. Um, half a pound of weight off of the, the top of the, the tank there. Um, I will have to glue that in because I don't want that happening on the trail and end up getting wet with gas in the wrong spot. But um, long story short, um, this bike is starting to come together as my dream build. Uh, I am going to wait. Yeah, that went in way too easy. I'll have to glue that. I am going to wait to put the uh, Voyager Pro on it, I think. Um, I'm going to wait to put that on until I get the uh, Rebel X um, rally tower for it. Um, while you're tearing everything apart. Another thing that I'm going to do is this came with the uh, the lower carbon fiber deals. Um, I was just going to pull those and try to sell them. But I think what I'm going to do now, let's go over to the other side. Um, there's a little bit of room in here. I think I love the way they look. And you can kind of see how, you know, it caps. And then they can run down a little further in here. and Just uh, maybe just uh, 1% or 3% more protection and maybe... Add a uh, coolness factor back to it. I don't know, but these are such a nice part. And uh, me, I have no problem cutting 
I'll tape off, tape that off and cut what I don't need off. But um, this front, how it wraps around and everything, and just probably wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of extra protection and they really don't weigh anything. So instead of trying to sell those, I'm gonna see, you know, check and see if it fits and how it works. Uh, one of the things that I did get rid of is the, uh, the aluminum kickstand thing that uh, adds a wider footprint. It was just extra weight that I didn't need on the bike and um, I've never had a problem with that. Usually I find a sticker or a rock or something to put the stand on. Never lost a bike to falling over. Speaking of uh, parts, this is the discard box. Um, this air box is definitely going to go in the garbage. Um, you know, we, we usually keep all this crap for 10 years and you sell the bike and you still got the box full of crap. So I'm going to keep it for another uh, few days and then see what happens. Here's that this gas um, cover. Uh, but yeah, I'll take, I'll take that stuff. I'll go through it and figure out what I need, what I don't need, and uh, start getting rid of some of that crap. Um, I don't like to collect a bunch of crap. And uh, as you can see, I, I am stuck on, uh, on room. I still have some, I got an enclosure coming from the CNC that's going to even take away more shelf area. So, but it will make a, a, a nicer, cleaner, cleaner shop. I'm trying to get things organized. We're uh, working on things real easy. Um, once again, if you guys have questions, comments, thoughts, uh, you want to know how I did something, um, hit me up in the comments below. I have no problem letting you know what I did or my theory behind it. Um, I've had a few people like, you know, think that uh, maybe this bike was awesome right off the showroom floor and should have left it stock. And hey, that's hey, that's great. If that works for you, that's great. For me, um, I'm used to a fit and a feel on a motorcycle. And when I get it, um, usually usually I do bars. I definitely do a steering stabilizer, which I've done on this bike, uh, the BRP triple clamps. Um, you know, I have to make that bike fit me and what I'm used to, that muscle memory, because it's so hard. Um, I've been riding for like, I think, 48 and a half years now. So it's so hard once you've done this over and over and over and over again to adapt to something uh, new or foreign. So um, if it makes it go fast, it makes it lighter, it makes it easier to work on, easier to service. Um, speaking of that, why I'm thinking about it is, um, you know, pull the seat, undo this, you can flip the filter, and then you're clean for day two on the top because the top gets dirtier faster. And then there's enough room in the side pods to probably carry two or three extra filters when you're, you know, if, when you're down in Baja or out on a tour on the Mojave. Um, that makes it super simple to work on. And that's what I'm looking for. Longevity, super simple to work on. Make it go fast, stop fast. Make it lighter, more horsepower. Um, I think that intake's added something like eight or nine horsepower uh, to this package on the dyno. Same bike, same, same tune and everything. Um, that's a lot. Why I'm thinking about it, and another thing that I do that I absolutely love is I put a recluse clutch, auto clutch in it, and you can't tell anything about that. Even pulling on the lever has a little firmer um, pull. Um, I did get these levers off of uh, eBay. I think they were like $49 or something, and I've had great luck with those on other bikes. They are adjustable. Um, I do recommend when you get them that you tighten up the bolts on it because they are kind of sloppy and uh, that tightens it up. But uh, free play gain on the uh, Recluse. I got that all dialed in. Um, that's about all I can think of. Uh, I have my quad lock up here on the uh, on the bars and my my cell phone goes on that. Um, nice way to be able to tune in your, uh, your earbuds and uh, listen to the music you want to listen to or even take a call uh, while you're going down the road. So as you see, I have DynoJet set up, set up over here. Um, I do have a Power Commander 5 on auto-tune, and I have the, uh, the pod to, to monitor. Just pretty much set up exactly like my 1290. And um, auto-tune makes great uh, power. It actually keeps the bike running a little cooler because um, it's giving it the right AFR, that's air-fuel ratio, all the time. It's always aiming, for this bike, I think we're set at 13.2. <clears throat> 
So it's always aiming to be at 13 to air fuel ratio. That's whether you're at the beach or at 9,700 feet up in the mountains. <clears throat> anyway, that's going to be it for now. Long-winded again, but um, I wanted to cover everything uh, in the process of the bike and thought process of why I'm trying to build it like I am. Um, I probably will do a couple events. I uh, doubt there'll be rally events, but we'll have to see. Uh, one of the big things I want to do on the bike is I've never done L.A., Barstow to Vegas. Um, I had some of my uh, mentors back in the day that used to race that back in the, uh, gosh, late 60s and 70s. Um, so something I would like to do, not the exact same routing, but it looks like a fun event. I would like to do it. Um, looking at possibly doing Big Bear, the hard routes, the hard way on that. I've uh, got three plaques. So um, see if I can do a fourth one with uh, this motorcycle. We'll see. I'll have to see how, how everything uh, shapes up. Um, but uh, questions, comments, hit me up below. Thank you. Give me thumbs up. Subscribe. Um, that's about it. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Happy New Year. Have a uh, awesome 2021. And I'm Tim Rubble, and I'll catch you here next time.